These are the Lightning Talks from the Tapper 2019 Tapper Digital Communications Conference in Detroit. Uh, this was my second year to record this convention and it went much better than last year in my opinion. Uh, the topics were different than they were the previous year, which is good. Um, all of course having to deal with digital communications for amateur radio. So last year I didn't post the lightning talks because I wasn't sure exactly how to do it. Um, they're basically just short five minute talks that are done right after lunch each day, Friday and Saturday. And it's someone who wants to give like a five minute presentation. They say it's a little bit longer than an elevator speech, <laughs> which makes sense. But uh, they're on various topics. So I thought I would post them in um, six. Uh, there's six lightning talks on Friday and seven on Saturday. and I going to post them each in individual videos. So at the end of each one, it should link to the next one. And um, I hope you enjoy them. And based on our experience of doing lightning talks, six will fit into this 45 minute segment that we've set aside for the lightning talks. So first up, we'll have Nathaniel. Second up will be Frank Palazzo, NQ8N. Number three, Rob Robinette, you're going to be number three. And um, number four is going to be Nate B um, Bizanzen. Okay. Number five is going to be Ralph McNall. And then lastly, Br uh, Dr. Brandon Wiley. And Brandon just gave us his slides. Okay. All right. So, Jason, are you ready? All right, let's kick it off. Number one, go for it. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am Nathaniel Frizzell, and last year, while I was working at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, I was able to send a couple of radio receivers down to Antarctica and make simultaneous HF measurements up in New Jersey. And so the object was to objective was to study the atmosphere using HF signals of opportunity, using some equipment that is low cost slash hobby citizen science access. Um, some of it really is citizen science access. I was using the Red Pattaya uh, 12514 using HPSDR emulator software, uh, GNU Radio, and the MIT Digital RF uh, data recording program. Um, some of the equipment did get more expensive, uh, mostly because we were sending it to Antarctica, so we used a uh, enterprise grade single board computer that was cold rated. Uh, I had a GPS for time stamping purposes only, uh, ruggedized SSD, and um, we used a uh, DX Engineering RF Pro 1B antenna. And you, here you can see the uh, setup down in McMurdo Station at Arrival Heights, and we have a solar panel connected to a battery, and that is a suitcase connecting everything together. So what did the results look like and where did we go? We basically just recorded raw IQ voltages so I could do all sorts of post-processing. I recorded six bands, 48 kilohertz of bandwidth each, and I was listening to CHU and the HF ham radio bands on 3, 7, and 14. And the reason I picked CHU instead of WWV is because these are so close to the ham radio bands so I could um, do a, a comparison uh, between the two quite easily. So here's CHU, there's West Orange, New Jersey, where I had the uh, continental US uh, receiver set up, and there's Arrival Heights McMurdo Station. And so we actually could, um, and then here's a 14 megahertz Arrival Heights, a 14 megahertz New Jersey, seven megahertz Arrival Heights, seven megahertz New Jersey, three and a half megahertz Arrival Heights, three and a half megahertz New Jersey. Um, only a very, very simple analysis for today. Uh, if I zoom in on one of our days of operation, uh, here is listening to just CHU at arrival heights, and here is listening to CHU in New Jersey, and you actually can see the carrier down in Antarctica and in New Jersey at the same time. Um, well, you see, uh, you do see diurnal variations though in fading uh, here in Antarctica, where you only see it in the between like 0 and 12 UT on 7 megahertz, and in New Jersey, it's kind of the opposite. So more work needs to be done, uh, but we have a really neat data set. And now that I'm at the University of Scranton, I have another undergraduate student uh, named Natalie Kripka, who will be working with these same receivers this year. And we're going to be trying to look for uh, how space weather might affect, say, PSK signals, because when I was down there a couple years ago, 
uh, trying to operate PSK from McMurdo, I could see beautiful, strong signals on the waterfall, but none of them would decode. So the question is, if we copy them down there, can we see how the, how the phase has been corrupted in those PSK signals in Antarctica compared to receiving the same signals up in um, the continental United States? So we'll see how that goes this year. Hopefully we'll have uh, good information to report to you next year. Thank you.